Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 smartest decisions in action movies. I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. For this list, we're looking at the cleverest choices and plans by action movie characters. While many straight-up villains have ingenious schemes, that's a whole other list. We will be touching on key plot points, so this is your spoiler alert. Did we forget a foolproof idea from an action movie? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Shouting the Suspect's Name – The Fugitive Deputy U.S. Marshal Sam Gerard is tracking down Richard Kimball on a tense chase. Your fugitive's name is Dr. Richard Kimball. <laughs> Go get him! When the investigator finds a lead, he follows a man in the hopes that he's the real target. They both end up in a stairwell where the marshal yells out the fugitive's name, and Kimball instinctively looks up. Richard! Gerard's quick thinking takes advantage of everyone's response to hearing their own name, confirming he's chasing the right person. While Kimball isn't caught in this sequence, Gerard's decision shows off his intuitive skills. Number 19. Telling his daughter to scream out a description. Taken. Liam Neeson's tough guy persona was arguably born in this iconic sequence from Taken. When Neeson's character Brian Mills calls his daughter Kim to check on her, men enter the apartment and abduct her friend. An ex-CIA officer, Brian realizes what's happening and tells Kim to provide him with as much information as she can as she's being taken. The next part is very important. They're going to take you. <laughs> Kim, stay focused, baby. This is key. You will have five, maybe ten seconds. Very important seconds. Leave the phone on the floor. Concentrate. Shout out everything you see about them. She yells out a description before her captors get a hold of her phone. In just a few moments, the hero learns enough to track down the villain and rescue his daughter. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Number 18. Trapping Dormammu. Doctor Strange When Earth is threatened by the primordial entity Dormammu, Doctor Strange enters the dark dimension to stop him. Dormammu is far more powerful, but that doesn't mean he can't be outsmarted. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. Using the Eye of Agamotto, the sorcerer traps the evil entity in a time loop. Dormammu, I've come to bargain. What is happening? Dormammu kills him again and again, but Strange doesn't back down. Talk about putting it all on the line. But I could lose again and again and again and again forever. That makes you my prisoner. At last, Dormammu agrees to a bargain, pledging to leave Earth alone and never come back. Strange's decision wins him the day and saves the planet. Number 17. Using a shotgun to trick a sniper. The Bourne Identity. Pinned down by a sniper, Jason Bourne must act fast. He finds a shotgun, and his super spy senses kick into overdrive. These children, if- That's not gonna happen. Using the gun, he causes an explosion that obscures the sniper's view, allowing him to change locations. He fires again in a field, scaring a flock of birds and misdirecting his opponent. The sniper's movements reveal his location, and Bourne shoots him down. It is a cunning strategy that saves the hero's life. Clive Owen's assassin the Professor may have started out as the predator here, but the tables are quickly turned. Number 16. Sacrificing Himself – Looper in Ryan Johnson's clever sci-fi thriller, assassins known as loopers are sent victims from the future to execute and dispose of. When their contract ends, they're sent back in time to meet the same fate themselves. When Joe's older self is sent back in time, he manages to avoid execution. I've seen that yet. In order to stop old Joe from committing a horrible deed, young Joe sacrifices himself. So I changed it. This changes the timeline so that old Joe never exists, and he just disappears. It's not often that a classic genre surprises audiences with a great twist, but Ryan Johnson's writing here does that and much more. Number 15. Ramming the Armored Truck – Heat How do you rob an armored truck? Well, how about with another truck? The 
The opening scene of Heat introduces Neil McCauley and his team of professional thieves with a lucrative heist in LA. The armored truck flips over, leaving the guards inside at the thieves' mercy. The well-organized team uses explosives to blow the truck open. The guards don't have a chance as the thieves steal the bearer bonds the truck was transporting. It is a slick and brutal operation that, aside from some violent hiccups, shows just how professional these thieves are. I got it. Got it. Number 14. Using a flare to distract the T-Rex. Jurassic Park. There is nothing amusing about this park. Corporate sabotage leads to the dinosaurs escaping their pens in Jurassic Park. In an iconic scene, the T-Rex attacks a jeep with Lex and Tim inside. <laughs> Paleontologist Alan Grant and chaotician Ian Malcolm know they have to do something. Fortunately, Grant is aware that, at least in the universe of the films, Tyrannosaurus rexes can only see movement. So, he breaks out a flare to distract the beast. Malcolm tries to do his part too, but hasn't really understood the idea. Still, it's quick thinking, and it saved the kids from being dessert. Number 13. Distracting the Villain with a Dance-Off – Guardians of the Galaxy Keeping the focus on humor, writer and director James Gunn decided to subvert expectations at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy. What are you doing? Dance off, bro! Me and you! While there is a big battle, Peter Quill, aka Star-Lord, challenges villain Ronan to a dance-off instead of a duel. His love of music finally pays off. I'm distracting you, you big turd blossom. Ronan is distracted, giving the other Guardians enough time to destroy his Warhammer. When Stan Vincent wrote this song back in 1970, little could he have imagined it would save the world. Number 12. Setting up three layers of dreams. Inception. Christopher Nolan is no stranger to tricky material, with Inception being among his most cerebral films. I specialize in a very specific type of security. Subconscious security. The plot concerns a team of thieves, led by Leonardo DiCaprio's Dom Cobb, that infiltrates people's minds through their dreams, normally to steal ideas. But this time, they need to plant an idea in someone's head. He's gonna help us break into his own subconscious. That's right. Their client wants the son of his competitor to dissolve his father's company. In order to fool their target and reach his subconscious, Cobb and his accomplices establish three layers of dreams. Dreams within dreams. The target, Robert, dreams that his father has told him to create something new, completing Cobb's plan. I know you were disappointed. I couldn't be you. No, no. I was disappointed. But you tried. Number 11. Switching Lane and Benji – Mission Impossible Fallout You can never know who you're really talking to in the Mission Impossible franchise. Go. Did we get it? Of course we got it. On the trail of extremist John Lark, the team begins to suspect August Walker. Enough games. I'll take you out of here. Let's hunt. So, they have Benji pose as anarchist mastermind Solomon Lane. Sure enough, Walker soon spills his guts to the fake Lane. Walker was John Lark all along. The IMF is Halloween. Nothing but grown men wearing. <clears throat> it was a devious plan, and the reveal that Lane is actually Benji in a Lane mask makes for a great twist. You'd think we would have gotten wise to all the identity swaps in the Mission Impossible films by this point, but it's a franchise that always finds new ways to surprise us. Number 10. Attaching the Explosive to the Villain – Casino Royale 
James Bond has always been a savvy hero. After sending a refueling tanker hurtling towards a prototype aircraft, freelance terrorist Carlos thinks he has Bond beat. During the struggle, however, Bond finds himself face to face with the bomb on the tanker. Carlos looks pretty smug as he prepares to detonate it. But as he soon sees, Bond has clipped the bomb to a new target. Thanks to quick thinking under pressure, Bond gets the last smirk, and Mastermind Le Chiffre is out millions. Number 9. Placing Weapons in the Escape Route – John Wick Chapter 2 He once killed three men in a bar. A we pencil. Were... I know, I've heard the with story, sir. Pencil! He can kill with a pencil, so it's no surprise that John Wick is well prepared when crime lord Santino D'Antonio sends him to kill his own sister, Gianna. Double-crossed and ambushed, John is caught in a furious gunfight during his escape, but he has a surprise of his own. He's stashed weapons and ammunition in the catacombs, just in case. It's a near thing, but the extra arms allow him to fight his way free. When every day could be your last, you always need to be 10 steps ahead of your enemies. Number 8. Counting Down the Pen Grenade – Goldeneye A pen. This is a Class 4 grenade. James Bond makes his second appearance on our list, demonstrating just how resourceful he is. The pen grenade might seem like the least of the gadgets that Q gives 007, particularly compared to the BMW Z3, which comes complete with Stinger missiles. But when it comes to crunch time, the small device is surprisingly handy. As a captured Bond looks on, Fidgety programmer Boris picks up the pen by accident and starts clicking away. The observant Bond bides his time, carefully counting down clicks so he knows exactly when to take action. The pen is mightier indeed. Give them to me! Number 7. Closing their eyes when the Ark is opened – Raiders of the Lost Ark The Ark of the Covenant must be a tempting sight for any intrepid archaeologist. As it begins to emanate a pale glow, however, Indiana Jones squeezes his eyes shut and instructs Marion to do likewise. Don't look at it. Shut your eyes, Marion. Don't look at it, no matter what happens. Apparitions destroy the Nazis holding them captive, but spare the heroes. How did Indiana know? In deleted dialogue, the old man who deciphers the writing on the headpiece also translates a warning about looking at the Ark. This is a warning not to disturb the Ark of the Covenant. Theoretically, Indiana might have also deduced this from 1 Samuel chapter 6, verse 19, in which the Lord smites 70 people in the city of Beth Shemesh for peering inside. In any case, good call, Indy. Number 6. Taping the gun to his back – Die Hard you can walk out of here or be carried out. When criminal mastermind Hans Gruber takes his wife hostage on Christmas Eve, NYPD detective John McClane devises an impromptu gift, his willing surrender, and a surprise, a gun taped to his back. <laughs> it shows that even after falling downstairs, sprinting over broken glass with no shoes on, and bungee jumping off a rooftop using a fire hose, McLean still has his wits about him. While it doesn't all go as planned, the trick gives McLean the advantage he needs to rescue his wife and defeat Gruber. Happy trails, Hans. Number 5. Using Mud as Camouflage – Predator He couldn't see me. Muscles alone can't always get Arnold out of trouble. Pursued through the jungle by an alien hunting him for sport, Major Alan Dutch Schaefer gets a lucky break when he scrambles up a muddy riverbank. Even from just a few feet away, the creature can't see him anymore. Turns out that the thick layer of mud interferes with its thermal sensor. Finding an advantage at last, Dutch covers himself in mud and summons the creature with a mighty war cry, luring it straight into an ambush. Number 4. Capturing the bus for a rerun – Speed We have an injured man here. The driver's been shot. <laughs> Pop quiz, hotshot. How do you offload passengers from a bus rigged with explosives? Defuse the bomb on the bottom of the speeding bus? Good luck. 
After SWAT officer Jack Traven realizes that the bomber is watching the bus on a hidden camera, his superior, Lieutenant Mac McMahon, comes up with a quick plan. I want you to make a tape and loop it so that it runs over and over, okay? He has a news crew loop the transmission, making the bomber think the passengers are still on board while they're really being offloaded onto another bus. This leaves Jack and Annie to make a quick and dangerous escape. It's a truly inspired plan that many other people have borrowed from over the years. And if its speed dropped, it would explode. I think it was called the bus that couldn't slow down. Number three, using the cargo loader to fight the alien queen. Aliens. How do you go toe to toe with a xenomorph? Watch and learn. As the alien queen advances on the orphan Newt, Ripley improvises. Climbing into a powered exoskeleton used for loading cargo, she re-enters the fight in the most badass way possible. Get away from her, you bitch! In the exosuit, Ripley is able to match the alien queen's strength and hurl her into the spaceship's airlock. From there, she's on her own, but a gamble to open the airlock while she's still inside sees the alien queen jettisoned into space. Number two, heading back to the Citadel, Mad Max Fury Road. They're going back to the Citadel. They know it's undefended. Even the simplest action, like turning around, can be the smartest decision of your life. It takes a lot of courage to venture into the unknown, but as Furiosa prepares to lead her band over barren salt flats, hoping desperately that there's someplace green and habitable on the other side, Max intervenes. His plan is crazy, but probably no worse than the endless desert. I suggest we go back the same way we came, through the canyon. Together, Max and Furiosa decide to book it back to a Morton Joe Citadel, where there's water and crops. Sometimes it's better to go for the sure thing. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Calling the dog the wrong name. Terminator 2, Judgment Day. So what's the deal? My mission is to protect you. It was brilliant to reprogram Terminators in the future to serve as protectors for humans, but the classic T-800's revealing trick on his liquid metal adversary takes the cake. If you hurry home, we can sit down and have dinner together. I'm making beef stew. Something's wrong, she's never this nice. The T-1000 is disguised as John Connor's foster mother, and when John calls home, he feels like something is not quite right. Fortunately, Arnie's quick-thinking good guy robot is there to save the day. Suspecting it is the T-1000 on the other end, he impersonates John's voice and asks about the dog. But he uses the wrong name. Hey, Janelle, what's wrong with Wolfie? I can hear him barking. Is he okay? Wolfie's fine, honey. Wolfie's just fine. When the T-1000 replies with the same fake name, the jig is up. Ha! Who says the T-1000 is a more advanced model than the T-800? Still, Arnie is kind of harsh about it. Your foster parents are dead. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.